Ouch! Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're not gonna be talking about superheroes, but we are gonna take a look at a tool brand that sounds like it's made by one. So let's not waste any time and see if these tools are any good. So once again, I've been getting weird late night on the internet, but not doing what you think I am. Hello, internet That's right, I've been Googling deep trying to find new brands that I've never heard of before. And this time I came up with a power tool brand that has an extensive lineup of tools. So I thought it'd be worth checking some of these tools out. So what is this new brand? Well, let's start to talk about it. So this brand is a fairly new brand as it was founded in 2002 and it's called Alloy Man. And the product lineup for this brand is quite extensive. They have everything from routers to hot glue guns to leaf blowers. In fact, this tool brand kind of reminds me of a young Ryobi. Or is it Ryobi? I can never remember. But either way, I've got three of these tools that we're gonna take a look at. And what I'm looking for today is to check out the quality of this brand. Because if this brand has decent quality, this may be an excellent alternative to some of those more popular tool brands. So let's dig into our first tool and see what we got. So our first tool is the Alloy Man Cordless Impact Wrench. Let's unbox this and see what comes with it. So right off the bat, you'll notice this very nice hard shell carrying case. It comes with the tool itself along with three extended sockets, six regular sockets, the battery, as well as the charger. So let's first talk about the battery of this tool along with the price of this tool. So the battery for this tool is a 20 volt lithium battery. And these are supposed to be completely compatible with the Makita infrastructure. They also sell adapters for this tool if you're dealing with another type of battery system. And it looks like they sell adapters if you want to go from a brand like DeWalt to Alloy Man. And they also make adapters if you want to use the Alloy Man battery on a tool like DeWalt. But if you're using the brand Makita, you should be able to go in either direction. He said they go both ways. Now let's talk about the price of this impact wrench. You can get this entire system, including a battery, for just over $60, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than any other impact wrench that I've seen made by any other major brand. Even the Ryobi comes in at over $200 with the tool and the battery. And let's face it, we're woodworkers here, so this is not an everyday tool. You're a secret woodworker? But even us woodworkers do need an impact wrench every once in a while. So let's test this tool out and see if it actually works. So I'll be honest, I've owned a lot of impact drivers in my time, but I've never owned an impact wrench. And this has got just a little bit different design. Let's go take a look. If we take a look at the head of the wrench, you can see there's a little hole here. And if we look at the socket, you can see there's a little pin. And this pin goes directly in the center of this hole. If we take a closer look at the socket, you can see there's a small rubber band on the very end. If we remove this band, we can then remove the pin. With the pin and rubber band removed, we can then place the socket on the wrench and replace the pin and rubber band. If we take a look at the base of the tool, you can see there's a lit display showing the battery level. You can also change the impact level from high to low to medium. It also displays the direction of the tool's rotation. You'll also notice that the tool has a small light at the bottom so you can see where you're working. So let's give this tool a good old fashioned test by loosening a couple of the lug nuts on my car. So let's start off by loosening the top lug nut. And just like that, I was able to easily remove that lug nut. Now let's try the same process, reinstalling that same lug nut. Now I tested this tool out on 10 lug nuts and had no problem removing any of the lug nuts or reinstalling them. Now obviously this isn't a scientific test, but for what I'm using this tool for, this thing gets the job done. Now my overall impression with this tool is that it feels very high quality. Everything runs very smoothly and it feels very nicely built. In fact, if it didn't say Alloy Man on it, I'd have a hard time telling it's not DeWalt. So in my opinion, this appears to be a very solid tool at this price point. So let's migrate over to the second tool and see if it can impress me just as much. So our second Alloy Man tool is the 1200 watt car polishing kit, but we're not gonna be using this on our car. What else are you gonna use it for? So inside this box comes a lot of items and accessories. Let me show you what comes with this tool. 
So inside the box, you're going to get the tool itself along with two pads, and it comes with a six inch pad as well as a seven inch pad. It comes with a D handle and also a side handle if you wanna use that as well. If we look at the tool, you can see I have the six inch pad installed. Both the six inch and seven inch pad both work with the hook and loop system. And the hook and loop system is ideal for what I'm gonna be using this tool for. Let me show you some of the accessories that came with this tool. If we look at the accessories that came with this tool, you can see that it came with buffing pads, sponge pads, as well as 10 120 grit sandpaper pads. Now, obviously for us woodworkers, those sanding discs are really gonna come in handy. But not only that, those polishing pads are also very useful. Now, if you've ever worked with paste wax, you know that using polishing pads like this are really great for bringing out the shine when using paste wax. And that's because you know if you've ever done it by hand, you're gonna be tied up for quite some time. He's not kidding. No, he's not kidding. But I also envision using this tool with other materials like a Scotch-Brite pad. This will be excellent for applying your hard wax oils. But let's get into the details of this tool and let me show you some of its features. So first off, let's talk about how we install these pads. If we look at the very bottom of the tool, you can see there's a screw head. If we look at the top of the tool, there's a locking button that holds that screw head in place. Once we have that screw head locked into place by depressing the button, we can simply take the pad and screw it into place. Now that we have that six inch pad installed, let's take a look at some of the other physical components of this tool. If we take a look at the top of the handle, you can see the speed adjustment. By rotating this knob, you can go from one all the way up to seven. On the underside of the handle is a trigger button. By depressing this button, it rotates the tool. Now, as I said before, I see myself using this tool primarily for finishing and sanding, and probably more sanding than anything. Now, this tool does not have any dust collection system. And because of this, you're probably going to want to wear a mask every time you use it to sand. Not only that, but you should probably be aware that this tool being used as a sander will be quite aggressive. And that's because it doesn't function as an orbital sander. In fact, it's going to function very similarly to a Festool Rotex, only rotating in one direction without any orbital motion. And lastly, just like I do with all sanders I purchased, I got the corded version, as I like the power consistency that you get with corded models. So I'm going to hook on a pad of 120 and see how well this thing works. So here I've got an old piece of stained pine, so let's see if we can clean it up. Now that stain ran really deep, so I wasn't able to get all of it off, but as I feel this pine, it is really nice and smooth. And I really like the D-shaped handle on this tool as it provided a lot of control as I was going back and forth across that wood. In fact, that's a feature I think would be nice to be incorporated into my Festool Rotex. Well, I'll have to admit, I'm pretty impressed with this tool as well. I really like the flexibility of being able to go from a six inch pad to a seven inch pad. I also like the fact that they give you a lot of accessories right out of the box. And the price of this tool is fairly reasonable at just under $60. And the quality of this tool feels pretty reasonable. In fact, I was trying to think of a brand that I would compare this to. And I think Black & Decker is a good comparison. And the only reason I use Black & Decker as a comparison is because I used to purchase a lot of Black & Decker tools for my old business. These tools were fairly inexpensive, they were high quality, and they last a long time. So maybe if you're thinking about purchasing a Festool Rotex but you're not quite ready to pull the trigger, this might be a cheaper alternative. That is for the rotating part. This thing doesn't have a random orbit, so you won't get that feature with this tool. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised by our first two tools we've taken a look at from this Alloy Man brand. Try saying that three times fast. Say that three times fast. Before we move on to our third item, I ask you to do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Only 11% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell and leave a like as it really does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, as a reminder, I'll be leaving links in the description below for all the tools we're taking a look at today. So if any of these tools interest you, go check them out in the links below.
So now let's go take a look at our third item. So our third item today is the two-in-one Alloy Man digital tape measure. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. So just like with all these Alloy Man tools, this packaging is very nice. You can see it comes with the tape measure as well as the charging cord. And this charging cord is a USB-C to USB-A. So my first impression of this tape measure is it looks and feels just like a normal tape measure, but let's take a closer look at some of its physical components and see how it differs. If we compare this tape measure to my lefty-righty tape measure made by FastCap, you can see that it's about the same size. It's a little bit thinner and a little bit longer. And the overall durability of this tool feels pretty strong. In fact, I'm gonna drop this tape measure a few times before we take a look at some of its physical components. Drop one. Drop two. Drop three. And drop four. And that's about as much abuse as I give my tape measures. Now let's take a look at the physical components of this tool and see if it still works. So just like with many other tape measures, this tape measure has a steel blade. And when you pull it out, it stays into place. On one side, it has centimeters, and on the other side, it has inches. If we take a look at the hook of the blade, you can see that it's actually magnetic. Just magnets. Now you may have noticed those black rectangles running down the length of the blade. It's these rectangles that allow this tape measure to be digital. Let's take a closer look at some of its digital functions. If we take a look at the side of the tool, you can see there's four main buttons here. Obviously, the big red button is the on button. So when you press and hold this, this will turn the tool on. In its simplest form, this can be used exactly like an ordinary tape measure. Here you can see I've struck a line at exactly 12 inches. So now I'm going to test the tool's accuracy by pulling the tool out to see if it measures at 12 inches. And hopefully you can see from this measurement here, we're right at one foot exactly. Now this isn't a scientific test by any means, but I took 12 measurements with this tools at different lengths, anywhere from one foot all the way up to 10 feet. And each one of those measurements came out perfectly. So I'm fairly confident that you can get some accurate measurements with this tool, at least down to 1 16th of an inch. If we once again take a look at the side of the button, you can see there's a function button. And if we press and hold this button, this will allow you to scroll through some of the menu options. This allows you to calculate area and volume. It also allows you to rotate the direction of the screen, change the volume, and give you information on the tool. Now with the area and volume measurements, the tool will tell you to take the length, the width, and the height measurements, and the tool will automatically calculate area and volume. If we look at the third button, you can see it's a units button, and this button serves two purposes. If we give it a short button, you can adjust whether or not the tool is referencing the front of the tape measure or the back of the tape measure for its measurements. So this just makes those measurements a little bit easier if you're butting up against a corner. You don't have to add the width of your tape measure to your measurements to get your final measurement. If we press and hold that units button, this allows us to change our units of measurement. And this tool allows you to go from feet to inches with fractions, millimeters, centimeters, meters, feet with decimals, and inches with decimals. So there really is a lot of flexibility with your measurements. The last major feature that this tool has is the ability to connect it to your phone using Bluetooth. By using the Easy Measurement app, you can take pictures of what you're measuring and then connect it to the measurements that you take with this tool. And the price of this tool comes in just under $60, which is comparable to a lot of other digital tape measures. And as I showed before, this thing can take a licking and still keep on ticking. Well, that takes us through our final Alloy Man tool. I really hope you enjoyed walking through this new brand with me. Well, I have to admit, I've been pleased with each one of the tools we've taken a look at today. This video is more about checking out the quality of Alloy Man versus the tools we took a look at. After filming this video, now I have a little bit more confidence to know that I can purchase a tool from Alloy Man and know that I'll get a quality tool that works. Well, thanks again for joining me today on checking out these three tools. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.